Hello, 你好，我系陈老师。So today I have a new topic to share with you. It is called stroke order. What is stroke order? When we write Chinese words, well, or when we are learning Chinese words, there will be all the adults, all the people telling me, "Oh, when you are writing the word, you have to do this stroke before this. So this after this after this. This is how we write it." A lot of people get really confused. For example, when we are writing the word "how," it looks like a box. And what's the difference between drawing just a box like a square and following all these stroke orders and writing it in three three different strokes? It doesn't make sense to some people, but there is a reason why people are doing this. When we are writing, that is when we are using our muscles, our fingers, our um our muscles in our fingers. We actually have a memory. If we keep writing the word in the same order. It actually helps us to remember. Chinese words just have so many different little dots and stroke, and it could be getting really confusing. To write the words in correct stroke order actually help us to write it correctly. So, just to memorize it more, just to practice more, it's going to going to actually help us. So, I'm going to teach you the nine rules in stroke. Order, but sun. That's how we call it in Chinese. 九个不顺嘅规则 Let's take a look at what they are. A lot of them are pretty like straightforward, and I'm going to show you how these are shown in some Chinese words. The first rule, top to bottom, pretty straightforward, right? Well, let's take a look at this Chinese word. This is the word lop, lop. To stand. So, if you look at the middle, and if you look right here, you realize that this is the final word. And I'm breaking it down into different steps so it is easier for you to see. When we are writing this word, we start with the very top dot, dim, and then we go down to the wang, another dim, pi. Wang. Let's see me writing it one more time. So we go all the way from the top to the bottom. This is a very simple rule to do the word correctly. So this is the first rule. Easy, right? Let's take a look at the next rule. Second rule. Left to right. Yes. So this is how we do our、uh, to show our rule, and、um, this is a word called zat. Zat. Of course, we also follow the rules from top to bottom. So after we finish the left side of the word, we continue with the right side. So go top to bottom, left to right. And be very careful, cause if you look carefully, the part on the right, the one that looks a little like an L with a little check mark, that is just one stroke. Okay, so this is rule number two. Rule number one, top to bottom. Rule number two, left to right. What about the third rule? Well, we know the basics: top to bottom, left to right, and the third one talks about symmetry. What is symmetry? Let's take a look at this word, seal. Seal. That means small. If we look carefully, we can see there is basically one line in the middle. It is a vertical line, with a check mark. Yes, but basically we can divide this word into two parts. If we have a word that has a vertical stroke in the middle. And if we have something that is separate on the side, that's basically not actually touching the middle, then we do the middle first. So let's look at how I write it. So we do the su ngao, the vertical stroke with a little check mark to the left, and then we do the left and do the right. Because after we do the symmetry, 
uh, the middle one, we still follow the rules from left to right. All right, let's go to the next one. Our next rule, it says horizontal first, vertical second. Yes, we do go left to uh, left to right, top to bottom. But when there is a horizontal line, we do it before we hit the vertical line. Let's take a look at this word. This word is tie. Tie. When we said we are following the rules, we do the horizontal line first. So let's take a look at this. So we do the wang the horizontal, and then we go back to the top and let it go down to the left following stroke. Remember, left to right. And then we go to the one, go to the middle and to the right, and we come down at the bottom to the little dot. Tie, that's how we write the word and follow the rules. Number five. When we are writing a Chinese word that looks like a box, we do have to build the walls. But there is a rule. The Chinese words that looks like a little box, we always build the wall on the sides and the top first. And the bottom is our little door. We only close the door after we put everything in. This is an example. This word is mo. Mo. If you look sideways, you sort of sort of can see the word. It means the eye. So, when we actually write the word, we start again from the left. Then we go back to the wang. Zi. Okay? And then this is our wall. After we built the three walls, we put our two wang in. Those are the little things that is in this box. And after that, we finish it with the bottom line, the horizontal line. So this is the rule, build the walls and close the door last. What about number six? Dialogue. Character spanning stroke last. What does it mean by character spanning stroke? Let me show you an example. If you look carefully at this word, we are writing this top to bottom vertical line last. This is a character spanning stroke. Think about it like a skillet. When you go and do a barbecue, you put all the meat in. When you are ready, you put the skillet in to put them all together, right? So the skillet come only after you get all your meat and veggies, all the yummy things ready. So when we write this word, which is bone, bone that means half, we start with the two dots at the top. Then the horizontal line, horizontal line. And after all these, we put the skillet, the vertical line in. This is how we do this, follow this rule. Be very careful because the difference between this and the symmetry counts is that the symmetry count uh, rule only applies when the middle part it's not really touching the sides, but this one is like a skillet. I hope it makes sense to you. What about the next one? Number seven. Dots in the top right, it comes last. There will be different places that you can see a dot in the Chinese words. Left, right, top, bottom. And if it happens to be in the top right, you don't see it or we don't touch it until the very last. This word is the word guo, guo. And if you look carefully, I do the 
horizontal first, and then vertical, and then there is the pit, which is the left falling stroke. And after that, we have the dot on the right top corner. So if you write this word, you do have to follow this order of horizontal, and then right falling with a little check mark, and then left falling, and a little dot. It's a little tricky, but I hope that makes sense to you. Number eight, 第八 Ah, I do have to explain this a little. Uber, who know what is Uber? When people have to call for、uh, someone to give them a ride, they call Uber. But this is how Uber works. If you call, and when they come, if they are here waiting for you, they start charging. You don't want to get extra charge when you are not ready, right? So, well, make sure if you、uh, are asking for Uber to come, only ask them to come when you are ready to go. This works in this type of Chinese characters. When you have a Chinese character that has something that looks like a boat, maybe something that looks like this. Then what you have to do is you have to finish writing everything inside the boat before you write the boat before you bring the boat in. This word is you, you. So we start with the things on the boat, the wang wang, zhuo. And then we use three strokes to finish writing the boat. So the dot at the top, and then that little thing that looks almost like a three, the number three, and then that really long stroke that goes to the right. So this is the rule number eight. Uber comes last. What about our last rule? Dai gao. Bottom line comes at the end. Do you still remember our rule? I think it's number three: horizontal first, and then vertical. When we say we have this extra rule, the bottom line comes at the end. That is when we see a word that looks maybe something like this. We do have horizontal lines. We have vertical lines, but there is one. Vertical. No, there's a, a horizontal line at the very bottom. That doesn't come in until we finish everything on top. So we have a very nice ending with the horizontal stroke. This word right here is sang, sang, or sang. When we say sang, yet birthday. So we do the top. We still follow the rules: horizontal first, and then vertical. But we leave the last horizontal stroke till the end. So, this is how we properly write the word and following this rule. That's it. These are the rules that we have to follow, and I hope they help you in understanding how to write the Chinese words.